Hello and welcome. My name is Heather. I'm a registered professional counselor, and I'm joined by a special guest today, John Cabrera. You know him as Brian Fuller from the show Gilmore Girls, and he's going to be helping me analyze the fight between Hep Alien and the song he wrote for Lane. So let's dive in. Now a blur made a list of what I like about her, Stella. Cool. No big deal or anything, but have you ever thought to write one about, I don't know, a girl named Lane? Well, Lane just isn't that great of a name for a song. But you have one called Lorraine. This is what I mean by things get a little ridiculous I'm sorry, but here. A million things rhyme with Lane. Oh, oh Zach. <laughs> non cliche stuff to rhyme with Lane. Uh, Look, oh, my gosh. It's your fault. You didn't pick your name. Your mom did. Right. I didn't pick it. Okay. So where were we? Both of their performances are awesome, but I especially love. Keiko's performance in in that scene she like I just love how she has like blends this like I don't really care all that much but you can just like see it is killing her you know oh my gosh well you know I think a lot of people in Lane's position would probably feel that way where it's just I don't want to say it's necessarily jealousy but I think it's just this insecurity but also just like it's super uncomfortable you're going to be playing a song inspired by your partner's ex and not only that like a whole list of girls names inspired yeah. you know by by people that he knew Wait, do, or, was he w were those all his his exes no did I, I did, did I miss that part I assumed it was girls that he knew oh my god because yeah, I mean that's kind of true because he <laughs> is introduced early in the series or earlier in the series as this like guy who's just like always got some you know some girls on his arm so yeah well, hello. Hey there. Hi, Zach. Trina, how you doing? Cheryl, come on, shoot me some. Yeah, you're right. Those are probably all the names of some of those. Oh my gosh, that's very funny. Um, I had to just realized that. How do you deal with that when somebody is like, when some when somebody that you you when somebody that you're with is celebrating is celebrating something from their past that doesn't include you. I think itself that's hard. And then you add the layer of it has something to do with romance and then it gets really hard. Also just having to play the songs, you know, it's, it does, it, it's really uncomfortable. The best way Lane could have approached the situation was to talk to Zach one-on-one, -on -one. Uh, but she brought it up. Well, I mean, it, and it's hard to kind of tease it out because it's also like part of the band and like they're trying to figure out their song list. It, the root cause of it is those feelings of insecurity or maybe she also feels like she's she doesn't mean as much to him because mm -hmm. he hasn't written a song about her. Deep down, the core of it is that feeling of insecurity. And I think that what she really wants to say to Zach is that, yeah, she's uncomfortable with it. But, you know, it's also part of the band. Like, I get it it's not that he's singing these love songs to these people that he once knew it's just inspired by them I think ultimately she wants that feeling of reassurance from him yeah yeah you do get the sense that like for for Zach it's more like I want great songs like I just want these songs to be awesome and I want our crowd to think that they're awesome and I really truly don't care about any of these people that we're singing about like I just care about it needs to be awesome yeah but for Lane there's this like wouldn't it be great if what made them awesome was your love for me, right? Like you, what, how awesome would it be if you had a song that was awesome because of the, like, because of the love that it represents, exactly. you know? So, so in that way, we're, but he's just not thinking like that. He's thinking a little bit more like a technical artist, which is like, you know, if we play it well, and if it's well done, and if it has the right syllables, which I'm sorry, babe, your name just doesn't have it, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think she's not really seeing that part of it. Not to defend him, but I, I just think that that's really what's going on. He's mm -hmm. really only thinking from the standpoint of a technical artist. Surface level, it's about the name and the songs, but underneath yeah. that, it's more those vulnerable feelings that's not getting addressed, right? Yeah. And so yeah. for Lane, it, it's kind of festering and she's kind of like, okay, well, you know, I'll play along, you know, and... I'll play the songs and it's fine, but not really fine because it might come up again in like a later time in their relationship. And what does it say about their relationship, right? Like, what the, mm -hmm. like cause this, this, and this to me kind of sounds like it's a symbol for what may 
be a bigger problem in their relationship, right? Which is his his inability to see the the meaning yeah. behind their relationship, and instead focused only on the structure of the relationship. That might be what is causing her a great deal of insecurity that would even make her bring this up. If she wasn't feeling that, if she was feeling that love from him, the meaning yeah. from him, she might just not, she might be like, yeah, yeah. In the context of our band, like we need these songs to be really, you know, a specific, you know, set of names and order and whatnot. She wouldn't be thinking about it, but because yeah. she is, it seems to indicate that this is something that happens throughout their relationship. Yeah. And you can see that when he says, oh, you're not a songwriter. He kind of, that would have been a good opportunity for him to be like, oh, like, hey, I, I'm sure this is uncomfortable for you. I want to reassure you. Like I, I'm in a relationship with you. I don't have feelings for them. I love you. And it could have been solved yeah. right then and there, right? Yeah. But that was a missed opportunity on his end. But it's also a missed opportunity on Lane's end because she could have expressed how she was feeling to him. Right. She's sort of holding it all back behind like smiles and like little chuckles and all of that, right? Which, you know, of course sends a mixed message to him, right? It sends the message that like, hey, you're cool with it, right, babe? Eh. You know, yeah. it. it also sends a message to, to me and, and to, to Brian and Gil that like, hey, there's nothing really weird going on here. I think that actually leads to the problem that we then end up with in the next one because, well, are we gonna watch the next one? <laughs> yes, yes, we are, shall we? Yes, let's okay. do it. Wireless mics. Isn't that too Gwen Stefani? Not if we were. Did you have to learn that song? Do you I still remember it? And you know who taught me? Who? Hey, dude, that doesn't sound too <gasps> bad. Carol King. It's I was so like, called Lane? Glowing. Oh, Dan Palladino yes, also came over inspired. and helped me with it. We can learn it next week. Look, we came to get picks. Let's get picks, okay? You can kind of see my, my reaction there at the end. Uh, Brian's reaction there at the end, I gotta remember. <laughs> Different person. Um, th th this looked like kind of like that was weird. What's going on, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that like, like you know sort of what we were talking about before. This is a big snowball, right? Like it, you know all of these things probably could have been corrected in that first scene. There are probably some people who seem who who want to believe that Brian could see that she was hurt and wanted to write that song in order to make it up to her. And I don't mm. believe it. I don't believe that that's true. I don't think that he would do that to his friend because mm -hmm. um, I, I, I know that he would, um, he's smart enough to know that that, that would um, make his friend upset. So I actually think Brian went into writing that song really strictly because he thought, oh, if, if Zach's not going to write it, I'll write it because that actually, I, now that I think about it, Lane could actually work. I, I really think it was just completely harmless like that. I don't think that, um, Certainly, I don't think that there was any like any feelings of romance that 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 uh, that Brian had for Lane. I think it was just quite simply, you know, he realized that there was an opportunity that wasn't being taken by by uh, Zach, and he decided to do so. If he had seen in the last scene Lane doing a better job of like of of showing. Zach and us that that really hurt that really hurts her mm -hmm. um and then I mean you know look we're we're also not like the sharpest set of tools in the shed uh, so to speak <laughs> um so of course like we, we you know a, a smarter group of guys would probably have figured it out uh but um but I do think that you know she's she's not being completely forthright with uh with Zach in front of us and so had she been I don't think Brian would have written that song for her. I don't think that Brian had like any, I don't know, intention to like cause any drama or trouble. He just got inspired. You know, even Zach, I think earlier he was saying like, oh, it's really hard to rhyme anything with Lane. And maybe a part of Brian is like, oh, well, that's that's a fun challenge. You know, I want to take that on. Which, which, <laughs> is, which is pretty ridiculous given that Brian does know the song Lorraine, which of course <laughs> means that it does. So the idea that Brian would be like, hey, actually, I have an I think that you can rhyme it with Lane, like, and not realize that like you already did it with Lorraine, I think is part of just it's part of the delightful 
humor of of this show and of the of of the the band storyline. I also think that the scene has a little bit more in it because it it it's the beginning of showing us what happens to Zach when mm. Zach starts feeling emotions. As a therapist, what would you what would you recommend that they, you know, either do or think about? I mean, I think Lane's reaction uh in this clip like she was very excited, she was really happy. I think this is a normal first reaction to have, right? Because she's just so excited that Brian is doing this and that, you know, someone is actually writing a song in her name. I think what I would probably recommend is for Lane and Zach to talk it out. I think what's going on for Zach is that he, it's his ego, yeah. right? Because now he's kind of like, oh, like someone is actually writing a song for Lane. Like I'll have more to comment on later on, but because this is his initial reaction, if he was able to actually recognize how he's feeling, he could have communicated that with Lane. And I guess he could have yeah. also mentioned it to Brian too and asked for like maybe some clarification around, you know, right. why. Like, he, like if he had been like, hey, Brian, can I talk to you for a second? And then yeah. Brian out of time been like, what are you doing, man? Mm -hmm. Zach has a really difficult time with emotions, with his own emotions. We saw it when he first started getting feelings for Lane and didn't know what to do. I may not be fast, but that's what we're dealing with here. And this issue with me and you is going to take longer than a chord change, okay? Sure. You know, <laughs> I would say that those feelings are actually like, and his behavior in those episodes, not much different than his behavior here. He just like really did not, does not know how to deal with it when emotions start to surface. I like you, Zach. I like you as more than a bandmate and more than a friend. I gotta get some air. Which of course tells me even more that he wasn't thinking from an emotional standpoint when he was writing those songs for those other, with those other women's names. And now all of a sudden he's feeling these feelings of jealousy and mm -hmm. inadequacy. It's causing like some, some sparks, you know, like some, <laughs> some, some wires are, are, are starting to like spark and, and malfunction. And he's about to get real weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And also the fact that they're all quite young, you know, so in terms of emotional maturity and being able to like really understand what we're feeling and being able to respond in a meaningful way, it's just, it hasn't quite developed yet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, totally. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna get real weird. You ready to watch it? Oh yeah. Monitor check. Please take a look at the bottom monitor of my check. pants. Test. Those pants monitor? are Friendly huge. Test. Test. It's like Drowning super, super flared. Don't get in my face, Brian. I'm not. Go write some more songs if you got a problem. Oh. You watch the kick that he does. Okay. He's gonna kick you here in a second. It's okay. the softest, it's the weakest hey, kick ever. Get back. Zach! Don't oh. kick him. Oh, oh my gosh. And that is an extra. That is not Todd under there. We rehearsed that scene for a long time. Yeah, we, we had a fight choreographer that 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 helped us like with that whole thing. Uh, yeah. I want to say for like a few days. And then we finally we finally had it down and you know, just like I mean, it looks like a mess. That that fight just looks like a complete mess, but it was actually very, very, very well choreographed, like everything. And we finally had it down. They called Amy and Dan to come watch it. And just the excitement of doing it in front of Amy and Dan, all of our all of our like our energy was like up here. And Sebastian in his excitement and exuberation need me in the groin during oh the rehearsal. Gosh. And I just <laughs> just hit the ground. And you could you could see both Amy and Dan were like, Ooh. and I just laid there. They're like, are you okay? And I was like, uh, 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 uh. and oh, Sebastian no. was like, oh dude, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Those are the those are some of the uh, yes yeah, so what some of the things that we go through as actors occasionally. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, the reason why I mentioned the kick is I feel like I feel like there was probably a little bit of like okay we we can't like get to like we we almost killed John in the in the rehearsal. Uh, oh right. <laughs> or 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 made him sterile. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that that scene is. Um, 
is interesting. I'm curious your take on Zach there. I mean, he's just, he's just gone, he's gone like full Looney, full Looney Tunes. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, he went rogue for sure. Like full. <laughs> What's going on? Because of all these feelings that are coming up for him and his, his lack of experience to actually be able to process those emotions, it's coming out as, him needing to take control right because everything that he said he's like oh I'm throwing out the set list oh like it's worth waiting to hear our songs yeah. we're gonna you know it's all about control what it's he's all saying. about control he has no he, he feels like he's lost control he needs like ultra control to the point where he actually has to like destroy things that um that that will that destroy things that will give him control over those things the set list the placement get in your place stand mm -hmm. over there you know yeah. um interesting wow yeah since he's not able to really process his emotions and just like be able to like deal with it especially for people who don't have that ability to emotionally regulate feeling these more uncomfortable feelings can be extremely overwhelming yeah and so what does he do? He can't control how he feels and he can't stop it. So he's going to try to control the physical world around him. Yeah, that's deep. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty deep. That's cool. I mean, that's really, um, I, I hadn't thought of that, but that's, that's absolutely what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then when Brian is like, oh no, like they're going to block lane. You see Zach just kind of snap. snap. Because Oh, you wouldn't want to block lane now, would you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a little bit of a trigger there. And like, it's easy to look at the scene and be like, oh, he's just really mad at Brian. But I don't think he's actually mad at Brian. I think he's more so mad at himself and he's taking it out on Brian. He's mad at himself for not really stepping up as the boyfriend and say like, oh yeah, I will absolutely write you a song name. Right, right. So at this point he does realize what he did wrong. I think on some yeah. level, he does, but he doesn't know exactly how to like verbalize it. He doesn't really know how to deal with it. Shouldn't Lane and couldn't Lane like get like say we're gonna hold for a second. We're gonna we're gonna take five minutes. Like the show promote uh, the 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 la the label guy is not gonna leave. So yeah. I need to talk to you for a second. I feel like she should understand by now what's going on with Zach. Mm -hmm. That is is that not is that not true? Should should she be as like confused by what's going on here? Well, you know, I think you brought up a really interesting point in that Elaine should know Zach pretty well, right? She's seen him have difficulties being able to express his feelings and emotions. You of all people know that it takes me a while to process things, okay? Yeah. So, I mean, I think on some level as a partner, she should realize like, okay, like what, what's really going on? Something else is yeah. going on here. And it's not just Zach, you know, being like a diva or anything like yeah. that. I mean, she definitely could have pulled him aside before if she noticed like, you know, he's being really weird about it. Oh, yeah. Like he had to have said weird things in the car ride he, or been really silent or mm -hmm. something. You know, there's no way that he just like all of a sudden becomes weird on the stage he was probably weird the night before he was probably weird in the apartment the way zach is he would have been this way leading up to it and this was just like you know the the big explosion that happened but yeah at any point i think that she would have picked up on like hey like i should probably talk to him about this i know he's not really good at bringing up his emotions or talking about it so like i'll be the one that will initiate that conversation the other thing as well is that for Zach, since he's not really able to regulate his own emotions, because he could have also realized like, this is not the right time for me to be flashing out and taking this out on everyone. Right. Like this yeah, is a like, really important moment for the band. Exactly, right. And I mentioned this in my previous videos before, which is that it's a lot easier to get angry than it is to feel those more vulnerable feelings. Because when we're angry, we're able to externalize that onto others or to blame it on the situation or whatnot like like of all of the times to do it when it it's the you know it's it's this is like could be the band's big break mm -hmm. either seems to suggest he just can't control himself or 
which would be even weirder, that he actually sees that as like a perfect opportunity to burn things to the ground. It could be an extreme form of self-sabotage, right? Yes, exactly. Understanding like, yeah, self-sabotage or even like an extreme form of group sabotage, right? Like understanding Mm -hmm. like how this also will affect Brian and affect Lane and whatnot and good because I'm hurt by you. And so therefore I want to lash out. Should we dive into the last one? And like I said, I'd never watched it before. And I think it's so interesting and certainly a great cap to what we've been talking about here with Zach. What is wrong with you? Nothing. Nothing? This was a disaster. The guys from the label were there. They showed up and we blew our big shot. What the hell is wrong with you? Maybe this is why people in bands shouldn't date. I guess so. Oh. Yeah. That gives me chills. That gives me chills, that scene. Oh, I love it. I mean, I don't love it. But I love it. Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I, I'm a sucker for, I'm a sucker for like, tough emotions uh, in, in, in narrative. Just how, how defeated the character is and how much he realizes in that moment everything that he did wrong. And, it, and you can see he's now able to trace back all of it to his inability to do just the simplest thing, which is write a song about her. Just write a song about her. Like you already have one called Lorraine. Why don't you just why don't you just use that one? <laughs> you know, just like chop off the lo- lore. Yeah. The, no, it's like the right, right. right? The, <laughs> Wait. The R. The R. Yeah. Lorraine. Lane. <laughs> yeah. You certainly see that he loves her. Like you can totally see that he that he that he fully loves her and that he and that he wants to be what she needs but that he's so ashamed that he just certainly is not yeah and that's what's so heartbreaking about this scene is that there's a lot of care and there's a lot of love there he does realize that this was mostly his fault and instead of taking responsibility for his part in it he's going to make it mean that he's not cut out to be a boyfriend he doesn't feel that he's good enough for her and this is an example of how narratives form in our relationships based on distortions that we have on others and also distortions that we have on the self. It's possible that in the past he's had feelings of being inadequate or he's felt that he wasn't good enough before. And with this situation, it just reinforces those beliefs because now he has more examples to prove that he's not good enough. And even, even the way that they broke up, it was not superficial. It was never like, hey, I think we should break up. It was like, oh, I guess this is why people in bands don't date. And Lane, I think, was really taken aback. I don't think she was expecting that. And she just was filled with hurt, pain, rejection, that she just didn't know what else to do. So she agreed. But he didn't say, let's break up. I want to break up with you. Yeah. But she heard, I want to break up with you. He also... um I think didn't say it because I don't think he wants that. Yeah. I yeah. think he he doesn't want that. If he really didn't care, if he really wasn't so clearly still in love with her, um, he would have said, hey, you know, I just don't think that this is working. Like, I, you know, as you saw, like I got a, that, you know, like kind of got a little, a little crazy there on stage. And I think it's just because I just, I'm not good at this kind of thing, but you know, I love, I just they think you're the greatest girl and you know, I want us to be friends. What he didn't do that at all. No, he, he was ashamed and sad. I think for him again, because he has troubles with dealing with those more uncomfortable, vulnerable feelings, feelings of like game or uh, feelings of guilt and shame is probably like the worst for people who I like, I like that you just made up a new word. Game. game. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> He's got game. He's got he made, game. He brings on a whole new meaning. <laughs> He's got guilt and shame. <laughs> oh my gosh. That you know, boy's got some game. <laughs> like, it, um. oh my gosh. Sometimes in my sessions, I do say smad, which I learned from Gilmore Girls. What is, what is smad? You're sad and you're mad. Oh, smad and mad. Sad, <laughs> sad, and, sad and mad. Smad? Smad. Oh, that makes me so mad and so sad. 
I'm smad. And I do say that sometimes with my clients and they love it. So yeah. Love that. That yeah, was a lot of fun. Sense. Yeah, that was it was. a lot of fun. Like I said, I think this is su such a cool uh, approach to, um, to, uh, to the show. It's actually very similar to what we do at Remarcus. I don't know if you know much about what we're, we're doing over there, but we do basically this live every night with shows. Um, we started with Gilmore Girls. We watch the whole episode together. We chit chat over the episode. It's all audio. And then afterwards we stick around for about 45 minutes and we break it down. That's what we like to do at Remarcus is just like break down all of this. So this was, for me, this felt super natural, really fun. <laughs> Um, and enjoyable to do. So yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And um, I loved hearing your, your input about the scenes as well. And yeah, no, this is great. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, of course. I would, I, I'll, I'll do it anytime. Let, let me know. Um, and, <laughs> and I would love for you to come join us uh, at Remarcus if you, uh, if you have some time. I think that your, your perspective and your, um, your voice and some of this stuff would be really really uh really fun and and if your viewers like this kind of uh like this kind of content um they should check us out uh just go to remarkist.com and and all of the information is there yeah and i'll i'll put the links at the bottom uh at the description so you guys can check it out as well but yeah i'll definitely be over there joining you guys uh yeah no we're having a lot of fun there we create like little collectibles for each other to commemorate our time together and we uh and uh, the app is growing. We're, uh, we're gonna be bringing in voice chat into the app itself. Right now we're using Clubhouse, um, but uh, we're gonna have um, all kinds of really cool social features um, on the platform that will allow fans to dive deep, to dig deep on the shows that they love. And we started with Gilmore Girls, obviously. We have uh, a, over two dozen members of the cast of Gilmore Girls joining us over the course of the month. Emily Kuroda is gonna be there tonight with us watching an episode. Keiko was with us. Todd's gonna to be joining us. Um, Alan Loaza from the Life and Death Brigade and, 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 do and dozens more. As I said, please come join us at Remarkist and anytime you'd love to, to do this again, I'm here. Yeah, okay, perfect. I will take you up on that offer. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe for more analysis videos like this. And also check out the Remarkus app so you can connect with the cast members from Gilmore Girls and other shows and also connect with other fans. Feel free to check out my other analysis videos and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, be kind and love yourself.